Series E. Series E. Series E. Apex Legends. Apex Legends. Apex Legends. Series E. Series E. Apex Legends. Series E. Apex Legends starts right now. Welcome one and all to our very first evening of Series E. I'm Jamerson and joining me for the next couple months, for the next few months, is going to be Tom T. Square Taylor. As always, glad to have you again. And Tom, are you excited for Series E? I'm so stoked, man. First time we've seen any type of format like this. The Apex community has to love it. I love it. We get more games and why not? The ALGS Summer Circuit just ended. Let's get into some more games. Yeah, we had an exciting weekend of ALGS this weekend, but now it's all about maintaining sustainability for a lot of these other players that aren't signed. We saw CLG take a big win in the North American series here, and so we want to be able to promote a lot more players here. And so this is what the players are going to be playing for. We've got nine sponsored slots on the line, and one of them is up for grabs tonight. So the winner will be walking away with one of the nine sponsored spots, but we also have $1,000 for tonight's prize pool. Only first and second walking away with money. And how do they qualify tonight, Tom? Yeah, so if you're familiar with the weeklies that we've been running, it's the same format, right? We have the same kills, same one point for every kill, same ALGS format with first getting 12. But the thing is, is you have to win this thing in order to get the spot, just like you were saying, Jamerson, and you want to get that spot early because you have to qualify each week or it's going to be your point total from the four weeks over overall. So if you miss this week, you may want to think about getting into the next one now that you're seeing what the format is. Yeah, that is absolutely correct. Uh, we had over 60 teams sign up for our qualifiers today, and we're down to our 20, and that's the finals lobby getting set up right now. We'll have five matches played out tonight, and so it's going to be about the highest scores. You got to make sure that you get your you get your um, kill points along with your placement points, and at the end of the five games, the team with the highest points will be getting one of those coveted spots where... They'll be getting a salary for three months. They'll be able to partner with some awesome sponsors like Intel, Razer, Rockstar Energy, Apple Jacks, Cheez-It, Pringles, Rice Krispies Treats, Pop-Tarts, and Nestle Pure Life. So we here at Esports Arena are going to be working with the winners tonight to try and partner them with the brand that best suits them. They'll have three months of salary and a lot of other opportunities but it's about making sure you qualify and then, of course, making it to the regular season and competing well dur uh, during the regular season. And so really excited for this format, really excited, of course, about providing more sustainability into the Apex kind of infrastructure. And we couldn't do it, of course, without the, uh, the sponsors that we mentioned, but along with the help of EA, who is helping us put this on. And so thank you so much, EA. You know, they've been doing a lot of work with the ALGS. We got more things announced. PGL is going to be having a 100k tournament in a uh, month's time or so so a lot of work behind the scenes so once again thank you shout out to ea for helping us put this on because it would not be possible without you and a lot of potential pro players lives are going to be changed in the next coming weeks tom any names sticking out to you here i think we should just run through and talk about all the deadly teams starting with dirty dan and protectful Cubski and Rambo, that team sticks out to me. You have Stink, Caselos, and Hundreds. Glad to see Hundreds out here doing his thing. You have Crummy, Pickett, and Rakanishu. We've seen those names numerous times. Don't want to mess with that team. And then you have Haklo, Zeratricky, Mercy Only. You have Solafide, which is extremely deadly. Aim Assist, RKN, and his team with Moore and Zanile. You have SOB, which is Scurry, Blitzen, and Amu. And then you have his Watson, who we've seen do very well in individual fights, but not really sure if he has the full team that he's going for here. Teen Tempest Hill stands out. You have Flying Drone, who did fantastic in the ALGS. So there's a lot of good teams here. Yeah, these are also a lot of returning names from our weeklies that we've been having for 
what it felt like three four months uh that we've been putting on over here at the esports arena and uh, yeah another uh team I, I don't know if you uh mentioned it uh Peach's team lcp with lou competing along with clarifee and so that's a very exciting team this uh team to really look out for but yeah like you said a lot of returning names we love to see hundreds coming back we love to see more coming back formerly of nrg uh competing on yep. that team but now he's been he's been having a lot of fun playing apex and so i'm glad that you know we get to have a lot of these teams um and so yeah really excited for that right now so these are our top 20 teams but only one will be qualifying of course like we said now this is just the start we're working with other brands other games to try and branch out more so if apex legends isn't quite your thing Hopefully in the future, we'll be able to work on other games to provide these similar opportunities for you guys. Honestly, I love this. I love this kind of grassroots growth in talent and, and just sustaining the ecosystem of esports, Tom. Yeah, definitely. And looking at the teams again, too, uh, you have Osa Rated and Exiles team and then Rosebud420, blaze it up, bro. He saw the sponsors and he's like, I'm in. <laughs> <laughs> hopefully it's not an unattainable dream for him it's gonna be five games like we said and we're only gonna be playing i believe on world's edge tonight and honestly i love the state i love the state that world's edge is in right now everything feels really good um, but it looks like we are ready guys it's gonna be game number one of our first week of qualifiers it's gonna be game one out of five and so i hope you're ready because we definitely are i'm hoping that they're just trying to farm up additional armors but i don't think that's the case because he did just get respawned so big fight happened over here on the skyhook side rotating in and as we said if you're not in your power and this is definitely two teams that are outside the circle right now is there a tricky team on the other side here never mind no it's not it's yo yo and stomps going down uh rock and issue he's got the r301 out might have spotted one, but instead takes the time to loot. Instead backs away, and he's so close to getting that red Evo. But you gotta imagine, are, is anyone else coming up from behind them? Is this a clear fight for them? They get detected by that Bloodhound. They're just gonna go for the reset. I like this idea. They already have the two or three V2, so they don't need to really push their luck. Yeah, no, no reason at all. And you can see based on this circle now it is going to be more towards the overlook side. So a lot of these predictions coming in from these guys that got into the buildings early. Good job by them. But this is tough here because the longer they fight here, Jamerson, the more likely they're going to get third partied by another team that rotates even later than them. So you can see multiple sonars going off. Probably Beast of the Hunt's been popped, but no batteries here and taking random damage from wall inside the bubble. And he's going to get down. It's protectable coming in maybe with a right side flank. Yeah, they are able to get one, but that allows THT to go ahead and uh, reset for now as uh, Tempest goes ahead and throws out that Q. Will he be able to recover the banner here, or what is he playing for? There he goes, pushes up with that Volt out, but he's not able to really hit. So now he's dropped down to about 40 HP and gentrifying. Never mind, excuse me, that was Rambo. He's able to get that one now as it's all up to team, but he gets cleaned up here in the south. Back up north, though, aim assist is able to clean up a team themselves, and now they are starting to rack up the points as uh, we'll see if there's anyone else in the area for them to compete against. And there we go, you see it on the board as uh, the fight continues down here on the south side of the ring right now. Crummy goes down, it's all up to Matt Pickett. It's going to be a 1v3 for him, the uh, defensive bombardment used as well. And Matt Pickett left in his lonesome, we'll see if he can get out from that. It's going to be difficult here, as we already know that there are teams, of course, in Overlook. But aim assist once again on the kill feed here, as more has been taken out along with RKN and Yuki Aimer. So that's one more squad getting cleaned up. It's Naughty Pride and uh, Muffins that are trying to uh, come in for the third party here. They've already gotten the knock onto Designful, onto Resulta. Getting a couple more knocks. The kill points don't matter that much. I mean, they matter for them, but I think they would probably trade that for placement any day of the week, but Pride taking so much damage to lead Phoenix, gonna have to reset here. I wonder if they have a Phoenix kit. No Phoenix kit, it's gonna be probably be the bat and the health kit, but it has to be a full reset and work around Naughty's scan here. As he was the last person on his team last time alive, let's see if he can pull off another big play. Oh, 
they have to back away now as uh, it looks like another team trying to get involved or at least poke uh, from a long distance. But both teams are able to full reset here now. Uh, oh, the r star comes on in. Naughty is going to get dropped. Now it's all up to, I believe, Muffins left here. We're on board with Certified that came in for that third party and they will get cleaned up. And Flying Drones, they'll take that. Because now they have more space to work with here as uh, we've got 20 seconds before they have to decide how they want to rotate into this ring. Yeah, this ring is pulling over towards their pinging. It's going to be, I believe, over towards these blue trucks oh, yeah. and the fences, if I'm not mistaken. But this is what Tech does so well. Gets inside of his drone form for that crypto. Tries to find out where the rotation is coming in. They see it safe over there. They're setting down the pings and they're going to go and play the edge at this point and just try to third party whatever happens in front of them because the more real estate that you own here, the more safe you are because you can see how packed up all these players are and that team that's holding the sniper post, it's going to be tough for them because the Watson changes. And if that Gibraltar dome goes down, they're just going to get destroyed at any given point in time. And it looks like they're running a Bloodhound, so a little early there to hold this one. But I like where Zeratrick he's at. I like this spot. They're definitely in the most powerful position right now, but... When you're in the most powerful spot, you have to deal with so many teams from so many different angles, Jamerson. Anything can happen if a team decides they want to charge you. And they're doing a great job, of course, watching their back right now as uh, they were able to scan and find out that the flying drones were right behind them here as uh, we do have a nice shot coming out uh, from that crypto drone. But it's Zara Tricky's position about making sure that he's got this high ground. He's got to be careful. He is vulnerable up there. And so uh, he does back away for now. He's starting to get low on that ammo for the triple take, and his secondary is an alternator. While the alternator is kind of okay, it's not bad, it's not the best though. This is all up to Exile here in this fight up against Fat Fruit Ninja. No, he's already got the knock flight. He goes down, but it's not going to be enough. He's not going to be able to 1v3 the squad, and he will get finished off. We're now down to seven squads with 19 players remaining. That's where I really start to excel, okay? This one was definitely pulling away from the sniper post. Curious to see why they elected to go over there without having a Watson, but any fight that's going to happen right now is going to get third party extremely hard, especially this one because of the fact there's seven squads left in this tiny little zone. Oh, Tech is going to get dropped now. It's all up to Panders here. We'll see. He's got the Mastiff out and he will be able to clear the squad. But does he have time for the reses? No, it's the third party to come in and he will get finished off by E-Boy Ronnie. B, I believe, who were on the cypher post above them, who I don't know which team made the move first here as uh, the fight is gonna go ahead and take place now. Zone is closing, they are under pressure. The team inside the ring is also firing on them. It's nades to take out Angelic here as now the zone is right on top of them. They have to push forward. Trix has almost no HP. He gets cleaned up. SOB will be able to finish that one off, but now it's all up to Blitz and left here. Two squads remaining, Zara Tricky and uh, the rest of his squad here left to clean up and that will be it. Zara Tricky squad will go ahead and take game number one. We had a, it was a little bit of a slow start, but then the action ramped up really quickly through the mid game. And then of course they're at the finish. Yeah, it really happened with that overlook fight over towards the right side. And this was the first fight of the game where it looked like with the knock that Lou had that things were going to go well, but it's just naughty on this bloodhound playing the <laughs> bubble perfectly. And I'm not sure if that was a punch or a tomahawk, but either way it hurts. And, Flying drones were looking so good this game. It looked like they were going to be able to get the reses off. They got Saucer back in the game. And it was it was just fantastic job by them getting into the late game right there. But this is where you're talking about they bit off more they can true. Tough job by aim assist. Yeah, I, I think, you know, they kind of underestimated how many teams would start trying to rotate to the north-hand side. Generally, you see a circle like this, and the funnel a lot of the times would be on the southern side of the map. But when you have a lot of teams kind of thinking the same thing, you have the same kind of rotation, the same kind of pathing, that's what happens. You get a huge bottleneck of teams up into the north instead, as uh, this was a massive fight again. With the teams, with how passive a lot of teams are playing here, um, we're, we're seeing a lot of third-party fights. We're seeing a lot of fourth-party fights. Um, ultimately, in the end, flying drones, they were doing a great job. But it was Zeratricky's team, of course, controlling that uh, that north side high ground the entire time. And so they forced out this fight, right? Flying drones, you got to imagine that they wanted to fight for the high ground instead. But Zeratricky was just connecting with the shots, and they were able to just hold it down up there. 
Yeah, and Smooth had amazing shots right there towards the tail end of the game. You saw great R9 shots there too. Everybody really started to pick it up. And I saw clean fighting overall. But when you have all three players coming in this healthy, fully red Evoed out from the God spot, everybody else was just so slim on resources, made it extremely tough. So Zeratricky, his team, again, they held the God spot. It's not easy to do. So you have to give them props on a lot of different levels. That's not an easy execution, especially when that circle is fairly easy to predict. They got into the spot, they held it early, and most importantly, they kept it until the entirety of the game. All right, and here's game number two on board with more RKN and Yuki. As uh, it looks like they're going to go ahead and take that similar uh, path here. As we don't know if it's a 50 50 quite yet. We saw earlier, oh, it looks like Yuki was able to punish Watson this time, taking him out. And now they have a 3v2 on their hands. Will they be able to pick up more off of this right now? As it looks like Yuki wants to go ahead and drop down to the low ground and push up off of this. So we'll see if they can pick up early kill points as uh, we do have the picture in picture. I love this. I love being able to see both sides of the fight. This is where you're talking about the value of crypto, Tom. Yeah, the value of crypto, but a good team's going to go and push you here. So you don't have much time to grab that banner. And I was saying, Jamerson, with these guys, if they're smart, they're not going to 50-50. They're not going to land over here. They don't respect one of the better teams in this lobby and they're getting punished for it. You can't make the same play twice. They're going to go and talk about this in the, you know, deadly, in the death screen in between games. They're going to get to figure out a plan exactly how they want to approach the fight. And they have the high ground on you. So if they get a scout, that's exactly what happened here. They're going to punish you. And now you end up getting out first. And that's not going to be good for your team for the rest of these games. Just go and take Harvester, take the free loot and leave these guys alone. They're some of the better players in this lobby. You don't want a 50-50 this. Yeah, and so it's gonna be important. The scan comes in first. The so Watson will slow them down. But as the first one is, go ahead and cleared. I'm gonna push in with another scan. That beast the hunt popped by Yo-Yo Joe now. But this push might be a little bit slow here. They're trying to find an opening, but they don't even have the armors themselves to work with. The bat comes out. And the longer this fight comes, uh, it takes, you know, the third party might be coming from their north here. Another scan. They just haven't been able to find an opening. They haven't been able to get the knock. It's uh, the, uh, the, the damage continually going into the arm shield of the Gibraltar, and so nothing really sticking for them quite yet. As uh, we see, Fat Fruit Ninja, he's taking almost no damage this entire time. Arm Shield is continuing to refresh. Finally, they'll get some damage, but the trades, it continues to work out in the favor of that Fruit Ninja's team now. They know that the tables have turned. They know that they're running away, and they're chasing after Stomps as he's dropped down to 30 HP. Pushing up is Yo-Yo Joe. He's back up with his team. And it looks like this fight might just fizzle as both teams just go ahead and surrender and back away. Yeah, and you can see more fighting happening over here. This is going to be Yuki Moore in RKN. Nice massive shots coming in. Yuki's going to get a knock, and he's going to bust the Phoenix out. That's perfect situation for oh. him, but... Oh, no, I think that's a third party coming in far away across the side over there, but you see a nice Wraith Portal coming in from Yuki. He did get that Phoenix off. I think he's going to be able to save RKN on the top side. Moore takes amazing damage right there from the Mastiff, though, so what looked like a clean fight with a start from Yuki with a knock there ends up going back in the other team's favor and you can see knocks not only knocks but finishes as well not how they were expecting this fight to pan out Yuki is uh is of course scanned as we have got another fight going on it looks like it's going to be the south side of sorting factory here bot shredder is knocked and it's just up to ultra daigo I don't think he was able to finish that off but nope here comes the third party now as crummy pushes forward with that mastiff Woo! Almost got knocked himself. There we go. He does go down now. On board with SOB, though, as now they are making their entry into this building here over um, by Tree. Anwu doesn't like what he sees, but with the help of his squad, they'll be able to clear that uh, Watson generator, throw in the nades, but some nades are coming in uh, from the other side. They back away for now, but their approach, it looks clear. Getting slowed down once again. Another Thermite comes out to slow them down, but they are slowly walking away this team with the Gibraltar defensive bombardment. They're trying to corner this squad, and now they're going in. They've got the first people to uh, damage coming through, but it's not enough as now Anmu pushes forward, getting decent damage off. Scurry knocks two with the EVA 8, and it looks like they will be able to finish off the third, but the third party come in, and it looks like that just might actually be it. As Crummy, Matt Pickett, and Rakanishu are here, 
as I think it's just Blitz and left. No, he gets finished off, and they just took way too long. That first team delayed for just enough time for Matt Pickett, Rakanishu, and Crummy to come in. And you can see the thought process there for SOB. They want to go and take that fight to him. They have the Gibraltar defensive bombardment come in, but it's just nonstop action. We've seen this before. It's like deja vu bubble in the same exact spot. It's going to be Fat Fruit Ninja coming in, cleaning up this third party here. Rakanishu and Pickett thought that they were the third party, but they're not. It's the fourth and fifth party coming in. And a great job there by Farmer Lucas, Fat Fruit Ninja, and Blighty, I believe it is, just coming in at the right time. Yeah, in a matter of moments, we're dropped down to 11 teams now on board with aim assist as uh, they were trying to push the team to the north, but again, they just bit off too much to handle there, getting poked by a team all the way to the northeast. Honestly, that might be Lou squad that was shooting uh, from the train carts there as uh, Bambino, Ronnie, and Dracos just going to go ahead and pick off. Uh, looks like the rest of them now it's uh, Lou and Kubski finishing off gentrifying and Resulta. And so aim assist now out early here. Game number two didn't even make it into the top 10. The zone now has to back away, but nope. Looks like they'll get finished off. No, he survives. It's uh, Rakanishu still alive. He pops that bat. He's able to stay alive for now. They were able to use that uh, Gibraltar Dome of Protection backing away into a nice little pocket behind this here. But there's a team on the other side and Blighty and Farmer Lucas will get finished off as uh, they do get ported upon. They have to back away for now. Rakanishu is gone and now it's all up to Krami left alone here. Will he be able to get more KP? He's got that bolt out. He's just not able to hit with all of the shots and he will finally get finished off, making it to top eight. What a set of events right there. Just an absolute bloodbath happening on that rotation. But we're looking at some of the teams that are safe right now under the bridge. Seems to be a good spot. This blue truck, which is extremely popular to hold down with a Watson. Looks like they have a couple rats inside of that one. But the team on the high ground is going to be the team that most likely wins this one when it's all said and done because they're going to be forcing all of the teams down below them. So they can elect to just sit up there and wait or they could try to pick people off or they could just decide to drop down very last minute and win the game when it's all said and done so we'll see what happens but being central here is good for their team this is rosebud and barely in his squad they're just gonna set up here and just wait for teams to come to them but it's happening here in the next couple of seconds so it's gonna be tough because you're gonna have teen hill and tempest rotating in once you get scanned you're also gonna probably have to deal with a crypto drone and emp coming anytime now yeah, Bambino got picked off there, and so E-Boy, Ronnie, and Dracos now are just down to the duo. They've got a little bit of a sliver of the next ring to work with, and they are also on the slow side of the circle, so they're trying their best to gatekeep to their north. They know there's a team to the south. They've been scanned. They push out into the open here where they will be safe, but this might have come a little bit too early. They do have the the dome of protection to work with but as soon as that runs out you can see that the uh, offensive bar or excuse me uh dome was used instead though tempest and crew will go ahead and back away as it's more important for them to go ahead and cover that back now so this entire time you gotta imagine yep lou and company are throwing in nades to try and get that third party from the safety of their truck but it's teenage and clarity coming up with some huge kills now as uh it's just Tempest for his squad. We're down to four squads remaining and 10 players left as uh, Luke is getting up. Peach, Clarify, hiding behind a rock. They do have the Gibraltar pushing forward. A lot of damage coming out from that Prowler, but they're getting pushed from all sides here. It's all up to Clarify as he's trying to get that bat off, but they jump on over. Now we're down to three squads left. Mr. Haculo. No, Clarify actually survived. What? Yeah, it looks How like he's going to be up there. He's seeing a revive as well, but will they be able to get Peach up? Because that would be absolutely huge. Lou needs to heal as he's going to do so. Not sure if Zeratricky saw him. They could have been could have been hiding behind the dead bodies. I'm not quite sure, but great job. Game changing, maybe tournament saving there for Clarify, Peach, and Lou. Yeah, and so we got a uh, trio, a duo, and I think it might be a solo left for the final squads here as uh, now. Um, Zero Tricky, he's got this all 3 one and the Massive, but they just allowed way too much time. Lou and his squad should be able to fully heal up. It's a duo on the other side here. 
So 3-2-2 two, two is uh, they do have, of course, the rest of the tracks to work with right now. Slow side of the circle, but it's pushing in. Zero Tricky doesn't actually take a tick of damage here. Pushes forward with that massive out. He's able to uh, connect with Mr. Hackular there. As uh, Peach and Clarify are now down. It's all up to Lou left and is lonesome here. As uh, they want to try and hunt him down, but he's trying his best to make sure he is not known. Tempest is the only one alive for his team. And it looks like... Well, I'm not entirely too sure <laughs> who ended up winning here. Definitely, uh, we'll have to take a look at the, I guess, after action report to see exactly what finished off. If we can go ahead and take a look um, at the scoreboard, that would be awesome so that we can give that a little bit of context to everyone. Yeah, Lou or Zeratricky, I feel like, was the two players alive there. So it could have been back-to-back -back wins for Team Zeratricky. If that's the case, that's phenomenal. But the fact that they even were able to knock multiple players on Lou's team when they had three players coming out from the right side was just such a great job. I mean, they're team fighting and skirmishing right now. Their shots, decision making is also fast, cohesive, and they're running through players and teams right now. So I'm very impressed with the way these guys are playing. I can't wait to see exactly where all the points pan out. But Team's Air Tricky is looking great after these first two games. Yeah, we've got the scoreboard up, and so let's go ahead and toss that up. 36 points in first place. It's Team Zara Tricky, but LCP, that's Lou's squad right behind him. Never mind, not right behind him at 21 points, so 15-point discrepancy. So that's the kind of consistency you want to see. A lot is on the line, not just the sponsorship spot, but we also have one thousand dollars for our top two teams first place walking away with an additional seven hundred and fifty dollars so as game member three heads uh underway we are back on board with lcp but oh take a look another fight over here as they should have the advantage it's more and rkn that's still up for the squad it should be a 2v1 now as uh rkn pushes up to the high ground and oh Nice little knock there coming out from Blur, but now it's down to a 1v1. He's going to go ahead and drop down here. Doesn't have any armor, but he's full HP. He will go ahead and try and pop that cell. No, instead, he's going to push up against that. He's got a Sentinel and a P2020. Not the best items, but if he connects with a headshot, it'll be all over. Actually, he might just be able to body and then hit him with one more shot from that P2020. As RKN tries to dip out to the left-hand side, change up his angle. Got the Volt to work with, and he's giving Blur time to work with Tom. What a fight that we have here. If he can get this med kit off, that's going to be huge. Both players are going to enter this one full shields. If that's the case, you got to give the advantage on over on over to RKN. Picks up an Arc Star and chucks it over. Is that going to hit? He gets the res off. It's going to do a little bit of damage behind him, but a great shot there. Going to rip for 50. Love the way that Blur's playing this one. If he can hit one more shot, that should be it. I'm shocked that they took this fight to him again. Yeah, and now fighting on top of the train, he pushes up, he's got the Volt out, that's the last mag for him, but he's done enough damage, has he? He's got the alternator out, now he's down to one shot left, and there we go, finishes him off, but the third party, no, 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 it was actually, no, I forgot that Keon was res, and he was still in this fight, oh, RKN. Yeah, it looks like it, and I don't think this is a spot that you go and look and say, hey guys, let's go and hold this right here, so they're kind of forced into that spot as we look at the team. Getting in a fight on the outskirts over here on the tree side. It's going to be aim assist, not OP. We saw them getting top five in the previous game. Meanwhile, Z Davis and squad, they're fighting over here as well. Already a knock onto Exile. Rambo gets a knock as well. This is going to be Saucer and the Flying Drones coming in onto Exile and Oso Rated. Let's see if Z Davis and his team can do anything. Gibraltar Dome is down, so we had to go and make a run for it. Now it's just up to Z Davis. I'm wondering if LCP are going to try and capitalize this as well. They're over here um, at Countdown and themselves. If they want to get involved into this fight or if they want to use this opportunity to try and rotate. Panders finishes one off. A pretty great start. Rocket 31 points so far. This is another team that's very deadly. You got to watch out for these guys. Rakanishu, Pickett, and Crummy. They love the fight and they're taking on SOB right now. Oh, Blitzen's the first one to go down. Here comes the aggressive Gibraltar bubble to give them the coverage they need against that defensive bombardment. And a uh, nice shot ringing through from that R301. He even tries to go for the massive from the long range here. Doesn't quite work like the triple take. It's Matt Pickett, though, with the triple take to get the knock onto Onmu. They finish off Scurry as well. And that's going to be it. SOB are gone. And uh, Rakanishu now has to get out of dodge as he's 
the skyhook side as we do see the ring will continue pull up to the north now over here the connector tunnel uh we're on board with solafide as they're making their push on in the scout along with the prowler in the hands of stay naughty they're having a little difficulty getting through there's a team in the diner or at least just the watson here don't know if it's a full squad uh split up amongst two teams or not but now Stay Naughty looks like he does want to start pushing forward. He does have the Beast of the Hunt to work with if he wants to. So he swapped things up back down to the south hand side. It's going to be Yo-Yo, Stomps, and Gobble as it's a trade. It's a one for one. Clarify for Lou now. And th there's the flank. Yo-Yo Joe comes on in with that Volt. He gets the knock on to Lou, finishes him off. And that's going to be it for LCP. What a great team fight there for Yo Go Stomp and just amazing shots by Yo Yo Jojo with the flank coming in. The other two players were focused on the other guy in front of him. He comes around, doesn't miss a shot with that bolt and just lays him down. But Tempest rocking the alternator and with the R9 out, it's not uncommon to see these players rock the alternator because you can't really find the R301 or the scout with a scope. So. Not the worst gun in the world, but not the best situation there for them to be in. But aim assist, not OP, finding themselves in another skirmish. And they have the beacon for us, so they have the information on where this zone's going to be. And it's going to be right in front of them. Yep, but they're already down to one. They do have the bubble coming out here. And, oh, they finish it off. Bambino finds one more, though, as he jumps up on top of the box. He needs help, and he aims way too high with that massive. They're getting dropped down on. Dracos will go ahead and back off here as it's TSS coming in now with some nades over the top. They're going to try and push forward off of some good damage, but nothing as it's eaten up by that Watson generator. His Watson up top will go ahead and throw down that Thermite to go ahead and get Ooh. these rats out from behind the box, and it's huge damage coming out from his Watson. 1 to 40 off to two separate players. Massive damage coming out here with the G7 Scout. How much did they clean up? Rockanisha went down. Kupski was able to finish that one off for them. We're now down to 11 squads as they want to finish this off. They're not going to be able to pick that up. Actually, no, Blur does. And so that's going to be a lot of KP going over to TSS. Uh, and now we're down to 10 squads remaining here as the action is going to really start picking up. They've got a team right below them. Watson is so close to getting that red Evo as well. Here comes the EMP. Wow, they're sending it here. His Watson going to drop down with the Mastiff. They poke down and don't see it, but it looks like another fight happened over here between THT. They have tons of loot in front of them, but curious to see what happened with that fight over where the EMP took place with his Watson and their squad. But this is going to be Zara Tricky setting up again over towards the side post, pinging where they want to go, and there's the fight that took place. It's going to be Kupski and his squad. Multiple players are weak. It's going to be up to Blur here. We've seen him clutch these moments, but a lot of his teammates are down, and they're going against a lot of good players right now one player went down over towards the zip line they realized that that player is going to pounce back up but the third party is coming in from the left and you have that final player coming in towards the right now the watson trap giving him some information to work with as he backs away but man this is such a difficult spot for him to be in we'll go ahead and pop that q try to survive for as long as he can and it does get him into the top eight at the very least for now as he still survived he was able to back away but his teammates are going to get thirsted very shortly afterwards. It's Solafide coming in with that final, I guess, fifth party there at that point. And so Blur will get finished off by Pride. And now we're down to the top seven squads here. As uh, we have a lot of teams now over on the north hand side over here at Skyhook. Yeah, this is pretty low amount of teams based on how large this circle is. But here comes the big fight. It's going to be up to we the people here with a nice bubble to advance on these players he's going to start with the defensive bombardment and then maybe push in after that with the bubble they are safe on this little corner so it looks like they're just going to try to stay here play the wall use that in front of them but the generator needs to come down i'm not sure if they have that or if it's just you know on spawn right now but great angles coming in from we the people i love the defensive bombardment there goes the generator and now they can make a play and set up pretty here this is so important for them if they can control the north hand side at this point as we see the ring pulling over to that hill that connects that area between countdown and uh sky hook now the other side it might just be a 2v3 as we do have a knock or excuse me uh one person dead but they're not 
trying to rush this out. They know they have plenty of time to work with. They got 55 seconds here. They want to find a better opening than anything else. As uh, they're poking out here, try to get whatever information they can, then just back away and retreat to their safe position. Yeah, it's going to have to be a portal play into a Gibraltar dome here for We the People. It starts with Bot Shredder starting something probably around that 15 second mark. They're going to have to kind of scout out exactly what happens. But the one thing that needs to happen here is We the People cannot afford to get too aggressive and use his Gibraltar bubble. They need this for when this zone pushes. They need this for the edge. And you have a scout and a devotion here. So it's not the worst combo. You can lay down nice damage here. But once you get over towards that bubble, you have to bust out the devotion and then hip fire with the scout if anybody comes in your vicinity. Now we are on board with Zeratricky's team. It's, but, oh, never mind. We were on board with Zeratricky's team, but they just got wiped off the face of World's Edge there. And I don't know if they made it to top five. That'll slow them down just a bit. Remember, heading into game number three here, they had a 15-point lead over the second-place team now. As we're now down to four squads left, pushing up now with the slow side of the circle. It is going to be certified. They didn't go for the port as they were able to just walk that up. Actually, they did have the port set up for themselves. But there's the bubble. It's used a little bit early. They do have a truck to work with as well, I believe, along with this rock. And uh, they've got to be careful. They have to clear their back. I don't know if they know that there's a team right behind them. Ultra Daigo goes for the peak. He picks off two. And what a play coming out for him. That might have been the winning play for them, creating a lot of space now as they start pushing in. It's the final two squads. It's Sola Fide. They've picked up so many kills. Take a look at Pride. He's got eight. They've got red Evos and cover to work with. Big, big Thermite gives away their position. He's going to go ahead and toss in another one. Here comes a second as uh, they're going to try and chip away at this. This time it doesn't connect, though. It's going to be a full reset coming out from both sides now. But at the high ground position, they do also have the slow side of the ring to work with now. So we got the nice split screen here to really show off what's going on. Got a gold armor, and so Bot Shredder should be able to heal up pretty, uh, pretty quickly. He's going to go ahead and pop the bat instead. No, the Phoenix Kit for himself. Pride trying to get a nice high ground angle for his squad to really spot them out. Hits him with the R99. He has one clip remaining here. This final 3v3, it's going to be massive for both, for either squad. We'll see who walks away with this win. We do have the early Watson generator coming out, though, uh, for Certified. Well, let's, let's keep it on We The People's screen on the left side if we can, so we can see if his defensive bombardment's gonna come up, because if it does in time, and they're taking the portal a little early, they were 7% away from having that defensive bombardment. They send it early, and Muffins punishes them through the portal. All they had to do was wait for that defensive bombardment for the Gibraltar, and they don't have a Watson on their other team. They would've just forced an early bubble. Instead, they lose the resources and take themselves in a two versus three. Yeah, now they go ahead and push forward off of this. They've got everything going for them. This time around, Daigo isn't going to be able to clutch it up. He will fall. Sola Fide will take game number three. And in a massive way, I am really looking forward to see the final scoreboard here because they had so many kills. They had so many kills, Jamerson. Definitely by far the biggest game of the day. And maybe that's what you need in order to jump the polls here because of the fact that you have 31 points overall with two wins. Yes, it is nice getting back-to-back -back wins, but it's not some unsurmountable point that you can't reach. And we just saw right there, Solofide put together our best game of Series E so far. Heading into game number four, once again, Zero Tricky. Uh, Team Zero Tricky still in the lead with 41 points, and uh, we are on board with them. Solofide, though, we're able to climb up really quickly now in second place here heading into game number four trying to do Solafide want to continue to hold that momentum now but uh, as we go on over the harvester side it's all up to blur and kyun oh no they might not have done enough wait there's the knock onto rkn kyun gets the knock onto yuki and now it's all up to blur once again taking this fight Goes for the peak, gets a good shot, goes for another one with the Hemi, but oh. has to back away. He finishes it off. More goes down. Zone right here to the right, Jameson, right where these bins and blue boxes are. 
yeah, this is, uh, when you see this zone, right, you see that ring. Oh, never mind. Let's go ahead and talk about the support that's coming out. As uh, they were able to get the knock onto Peach, LCP. They want to take him out early on. They want to try and abduct him, take him back, and finish him off. But then, never mind. They don't need to do that. As uh, LCP now down to a duo. And, you know, that's the crypto down. They're not going to be able to push up. What? Oh, they pushed through that portal. It's Watson trapped up. And now they answer one for one. And so they have an opportunity now to go for Peach's banner and get him back into this game. And this is such an important fight because we know where this zone is pulling, but look at the cat's cradle on the portal there. So surprising to see them go and try to push through that one, but they do get the banner on the right side of the screen. Bubble's gonna go down, finish it, finish it off with the triple take. So all hell kind of breaking loose randomly on this tree side as teams have all rotated from the dome, lava side, and possibly from sorting. Realizing that they can't come from the fragment side, they're gonna have to make their way over towards this right side choke. But unfortunate for Rakanishu that he gets taken out and thirsted there by Dracos with the long range scout. So Dracos putting in work. Also, one of our top five teams continuing to really make a name for themselves. We were wondering if they're gonna be able to keep it up, and it looks like they are. They're gonna try to find some more big kills here. It's gonna be the Beast of the Hunt coming in from Designful. They know what they're capable of, they know they're one of the stronger team fighting teams here but they haven't found themselves in a good position because of the fact that they've been getting third partied so often. So looks like their idea is just a full send right here, but there it is, the triple take coming in. Saucer gets the knock on the gentrifying and now Designful having to play support here, wondering exactly where those shots came from while he's taking damage as well. So you have to keep your head on a swivel up on top of this rock as everyone's starting to collapse because they realize exactly what's happening as the Gibraltar res does happen. And maybe Amos is going to rethink about crossing over because of the fact that all these players and fragment of whoever tries to get over towards the choke. The problem is, is what do you do once the zone rotates over towards the left hand side? If it pulls on them, they're in a great spot. They're in one of the best spots, but this is the team that they have to deal with and Designful opens it up with a knock. So if they can push up this hill and finish these guys off, they're going to have just complete dominance of the majority of this zone. Designfold was forced to heal up though, and there is the Jibby Bubble Res, but Resulta follows it up, and it's a re-knock, as now the Beast of the Hunt is popped. Designfold going in with that scan. Gonna climb up to the high ground now. Fat Fruit Ninja is gonna be the first one to get spotted out. No, never mind. It was the Wraith there there that was uh, dropped down to 50 HP. Another scan comes out, and it's gentrifying, getting the thirst onto Blighty as Designfold's trying his best with that Mastiff to try and find more. They're being slowed down just a bit. Massive shots now finally starting to connect as Protectful will be the one to take out Fat Fruit Ninja. And, you know, they might call the retreat here. Is, uh, they're kind of committing pretty hard onto this here. They have another team involved in this fight. So do they really want to commit onto this? It looks like things will slow down just a little bit. These teams are resetting, but no, here comes the damage from behind. Protectful taking a lot of damage. We'll have to use that Wraith portal. He's dropped down to 20 HP, he gets finished off. It's gentrifying and Resulta, they try to come in for the third party, but it's gonna be aim assist to walk out on top. Jamerson, aim assist has wiped almost every single team that's been dead so far. They have at least three to four team wipes, maybe even more. There's only 15 squads left, but here's a fight still happening over towards the tree side. We did see a lot of action there earlier. This is Solafide, our number two team right now in terms of points. They're in a little bit of a skirmish and it's not looking too good for them quite yet, but there's a knock, two knocks, and there is the third one. They're cleaning that one up. Again, they're on the edge. The zone's not too far. They should be safe to make their way on over there with the Gibraltar bubble, but a great job there by Solafide picking up three more kills and advancing. This is a tough spot to be in because that zone is ticking hard. It's gonna be Drix dropping. You don't have the bubble here. You're not gonna be able to have a generator down either because it's already been used and already taken down to no shield. So much action happening everywhere. You can see kills all over the place over towards the top right, but some of our notable teams still alive. Amos is still alive. Solafide still alive. Team Zera tricky. I think the flying drones you can see in the bottom right trying to find an angle as well. Looks like it's going to be tech with an EMP here very shortly. Yeah, he is just waiting it out. They already understand that there's one knock, and so he doesn't have to go for it. He doesn't have to pressure with that right now. He's going to wait to see, and there is the knock. As uh, Saucer was able to take out uh, Osa rated R, Z Davis gets finished off as well. We know 165 is also somewhere in the area right now. It's all up to Exile here as he tries to go for that res onto Z Davis. But here's the pressure coming out. Saucer pushes up. He's got the volts out and he'll be able to finish Z Davis off. 
And now with 11 squads remaining and 27 players left, the zone will be pulling towards the chokes. We'll see if it pulls down over to the shipping containers that's just north of that area. Definitely gonna be one of these container endings and a lot of these teams have been set up here for quite some time and realizing exactly what's going on. So it's a matter of which choke and area are you gonna come from because it's so tough and you can see other people thinking the same thing. So you have to fight for your spot. Meanwhile, you have to worry about getting third parties from behind and this is gonna be a double bubble fight, but Crummy gets picked off. Looks like he's gonna be able to queue. Did take a lot of damage, but a great generator there from Pickett. Not enough though, it's gonna be Naughty and Solapide coming in with Nox. There it is, Rakanishi goes down and Krami is the only one alive. Not the end of that one, but we'll see how exactly Solapide uh, managed this one. So we saw the third party coming in. The scan comes out from Naughty, gives them good information. They're inside the shipping containers right ahead of them. They clear the Watson generator and they try to do this safely. But with seeing Krami getting another knock onto Dracos, they're just gonna go ahead and back off and really play more for position here. Solofide are in such a great spot. They're controlling one of the two stronger chokes in the next zone. They understand there's a lot of trades going on and it's gonna be aim assist possibly coming in for this one right now. Crummy tries to cue him back away here as uh, he has to go up and straight into Solofide now as uh, Crummy does have a small little sliver to work with, but he gets finished off. As, uh, it is going to be actually Zara Tricky Squad coming in, but no, they've taken so much damage, and now this might be it. Solafide can take the lead right here, right now. Zara Tricky will get finished off. Solafide now have the opportunity to grow the lead now up against uh, Zara Tricky Squad. That's so big to see that you're the team that's getting the kills. Meanwhile, Flying Drone. On the back foot, you can see the Thermite ticking over and over again. Nice gold armor cells coming in for tech. And it looks like they're going to try to hit that Watson generator there with the ultimate accelerant. But I'm not sure if they're going to be able to get on over to Saucer because the Bloodhound scan does come out. You have multiple teams on the opposite side of the fence. You have a team over towards the high ground. Then you have players over towards your left. So there goes the Rez coming on to Saucer there from Panthers. I think he's going to be able to get this one and tech's going to have to back off. Mainly, they're going to watch their left side, knowing that there's multiple teams over towards the front of them. So it's going to have to be a nice EMP play from Tech. They're going to have to get inside a drone form. While that's happening, the other two players are going to have to watch his side so he can gather information for them. So Lafine, they've got the southeast side to themselves right now as they are creeping up. They do have Pride's portal to work with as well. As uh, it looks like, you know, in every cardinal direction, that's kind of uh, how this map has been split up here. One to the west, one to the north, one to the south, and one to the east. Pander setting up some early, early fences just to try and cover one of their angles at the very least. Now they do have to heal up as tech has been dropped down to about 35 HP, but it's the early positioning coming out uh, from the team that was controlling that choke. I believe that's aim assist that's already over at shipping containers as the defensive bombardment does come down. Saucer is going to go ahead and queue on in with that port for his squad. Tech and Saucer tank a little bit, but do they have enough space to work with? Here comes the flank. They have to get the focus fire down, but it's going to be tech that goes down. It's 165 coming up with this out of nowhere. We saw them getting the fights early on, and they will be able to clean them up. We're now down to three squads left here as Solafide. Now on top of the shipping containers, they'll finish off aim assist, and now it's down to two squads remaining here. We saw a back-to-back -back starting it off here. Will Solafide be able to get it back-to-back? -back? Pride falls, and no, 165 comes out of nowhere and puts a stop to Solafide. And you're just so surprised to see a team like Solafide in second place not able to finish that one off. Really great job by 165 in that final team fight. Who will secure that first spot? Yeah, as long as one of these teams over towards the top doesn't completely throw and just lose out early, it's going to be a two-team race. Both these teams have to die early, and a team like Aim Assist or one of these other guys around 30 points would have to have a big 20-point game and take it over. It's fairly rare for these teams have been playing so well to go and try to make a big mistake. I highly doubt that's going to happen, but you never know if a team's going to send it on them extra hard because they know the circumstances. Naughty started this fight off. He's already got the knock, I believe, onto one, and uh, they began to do these fights. It's going to be Clarify going down next, and they finish off LCP. 
kind of large, but Teenage, again, setting up another great angle. Here comes the scan from Tempest. He's got the Beast of the Hunt to work with if he wants to push forward with that. Do have the block on that door as Hill does it back away. The Thermite from the other side. That slows him down, but there's the first knock. Teen getting it on We the People. That's the Gibraltar down. That's going to be the Dome gone for them. So no fast rest for them. And here comes the Blitz out now as Teen with the Mastiff gets bought Shredder, and they will be able to finish off the squad. Really excited to see where everyone lands. It's Bambino, though, that's landing in a little bit of trouble. He pops out that Q instantly to try and get that EMP. I thought that might have just been a panic cue, but no, the EMP might have slowed him down just enough. Here comes the Gibraltar bubble as well to help him with the reset. Both teams using that bubble now, but as soon as it clears, we see the charge coming on through. Ronnie's the first one to go down, but Bambino gets the spray down onto results. Uh, gentrifying takes one more down, and it looks like aim assist, not OP, will go down to aim assist there. The Resulta will go ahead and get Rez right back up. Is there any other team here to try and punish them? Looks like they should be safe and Resulta will be able to save, uh, stabilize. They just have to wait for the game to come to them and play into their play style. You don't want, really want to force anything. Oh, we're talking about forcing, there is a fight out. It's a one for one exchange as Gentrifying is able to answer back up against oh. Rat Brute Ninja, but Farmer Lucas comes in and now it's all up to Gentrifying here. He it became so much more fun and more importantly, balance. That's what you want to see in these type of games is just balance. That's why all these guns are so good. The strong ones have gotten bolted. As uh, they're all over on the survey side, they'll be able to recover. Here's the Beast of the Hunt coming out from Zara Tricky. As uh, again, that red outline can be massive for him. He's da oh, doing so much damage. Protectable goes down. It's up to Kubski now and Rambo to try and hold the line, but Protectable will go down now they are down to a duo and as this ring closes this becomes easier and easier for zero tricky's team to hold they no longer really have to worry about the western side now they can refocus of course on the east and the south part of this map as uh, i highly doubt that a team's going to try and rotate from the west taking that ring damage if they send it on this and win this team fight, it's going to open up the map big time for them. But you do have pressure coming in over here, gentrifying. They're coming in on the other side as well. So watch out for these guys because they have Prowler in hand and you get the kills to the left and try to get back into this one and take back over the lead that they had before. But it's Pride starting things off with a big PK, getting into Wraith form and Naughty going to get the knock on the pandas. Yeah, he dodges the uh, defensive bombardments, go right back in with the PK. Massive damage coming across, and Solafide now control the south side of the map here. The chance of getting third party when you send it on that is even higher. They need to clear out protectful team over the left. Meanwhile, Solafide landing some big grenades over here on the team behind the box. Now it's a sandwich as well as Zara Tricky's team coming in from the north hand side. Here it is with the R301. Almost got the knock, but now Hakula pushing forward, going over to the right hand side, but he wants to play this a little safer. They know again, these are the top two teams, Solafide and Zara Tricky right now competing neck and neck. They are in the first and second place position, but only one team will secure the sponsorship tonight. The sandwich coming in very slowly here, but it looks like both teams are going to commit to the inside tunnel. We've got three teams involved in this fight, though, as right now, Haculo trying to find any damage. Not able to connect quite yet with that R301. He's waiting for the rest of his team to come in now, but the zone will start pressuring them. The bubble has already been used, but they've got a lot of cover to work with. Do they have a pocket? Do they have cover here as the zone is going to force them out? And it looks like they do have this big box to work with right now. It's solo feeding on the other side. Mr. Haculo taking a lot of damage here as uh, right now, the resetting space is there. They're going to be able to get themselves off. They're detected by the scan. Here comes an aggressive Gibraltar bubble. It's Gentrifying Ashley coming in. It's aim assist as they trade away. Mercy only for results. Is there tricky going down? And that might have just been it as Resulta and Gentr excuse me, and aim assist are going to be able to clean that up and Solafide allow them to do it. They must have taken another rotation path. Really uh, do a lot of the work for them. Solafide getting closer and closer to try and clutch this up, but they get pushed. It's aim assist. Clapping wow. back. Aim assist will just wipe them off the map. And now I <laughs> don't know. Well, if aim aim assist snowball, they can win. If aim assist snowballs, they can win. We're not quite sure. The three early kill points from Solafide was absolutely huge. But if you see more squad wipes coming in, and aim assist knows the score. They know that they need to rack up a lot of points. They know who they just took out. Anything could happen here, but aim assist is going to send it no matter what.
They took out first and second, and now they just wanted to try and clutch this up. There was a point, 20 point discrepancy between them and Solofide at the start of this, but they are picking up so many kills. Designful with another one, taking out 165's nades, and now the defensive bombardment will come out actually from the other side here, as uh, they're not going for the quick press quite yet. As nades gets finished off, a maze will go down as well, and it's all up to Strictly here. It's not going to be aim assist picking up these kills. They need to hurry on up. They do pick up the beacon, but uh, to, to what extent as Strictly is trying his best to try and survive for as long as possible. Aim assist, though, they're now slowing it down. Designful picks off a kill on to Strictly, and aim assist are doing so much right now throughout the entirety of this game. Want here to try and close this out, but Kupski sets up an early portal and gets back to the safety of his team. There's 20 seconds to work with now as the zone closes in. We have another gonna portal be coming chaos. out. That's going to be aim assist, and you're absolutely correct. Take a look at all the portals. The triple charge, uh, triple take does connect on 72, but they do it early enough. Does aim assist to try and reset, but that does mean they use that bubble early on. They're not going to have it here for this final fight. Yeah, that's unfortunate that they have to use their bubble. They're going to have to make their way down from underneath the building. Everyone is focusing them for some reason. And there's the bubbles coming down. Gentrifying trying to play this one late. He's going to take the portal in late. A lot of damage coming through. The Q not able to connect. It's up to Resulta. It's up to the... It's up to Designful to try to do something. I'm not sure exactly what's happening because, again, it is just complete chaos. Exile in the final zone right here. He's trying to get an armor swap. He hits the red one. Who's left, though? Where is this final player? He's hiding behind the body, and that's going to be it. Remember, aim assist came into uh, game number five, tied for third place with 165, and they took out the first, second, and, well, the other competition there tied for third with them. They were 20 points behind Solafide, but they might have just caught up on kill points alone. But uh, honestly, I've been impressed by so many, so many of the other teams that competed today. We yeah. saw a lot of great fights. We're seeing a lot of new names really pop up as well. I mean, I want to talk yeah. about a, a TSS. We got to see them a lot today, taking a lot of great fights. Uh, they were fighting more. 165 as well, taking the win in game number four. Uh, Really, of names that not OP. I'm not familiar with. Yeah, aim assist not OP. A lot of teams, and I'm glad that's why we're able to do this here at Series E. Really put a focus on some names that we haven't heard of before. Give them new opportunities. Give them chances to play at at you know uh, at least you know have the sponsorship money to work with. Have um, kind of balance um, around their kind of work life and also competing uh, ability. And so, man. What a great game number five as we're taking a look at the highlights here. I am just so happy right now, Tom. Yeah, and, and this was such a crazy scenario inside of the train station where we thought the top three teams were all going to duke it out. But it was a crazy move also for Mr. Hakulo and Zara Tricky not to go and send it early on Protectful and his squad after they got that knock. I felt like Team Zara Tricky needed to capitalize on that and clear out that left side and just own the rest of this map and decide what they wanted to do. They know that they saw Solafide pick up early kill points, so they needed to go and take that two versus three advantage. What's crazy is, is that they got the res off on the protectful side, and that made the game that much harder for a team like aim assist going forward that aim assist had to deal with multiple squads of three instead of maybe squads of two and some rats. So all the things in the butterfly effect kind of all coming into play here, and uh, it was one hell of a day to start off Series E, that's for sure. Yeah, and, you know, you can look back and be like, oh, maybe this was a mistake. I mean, it was so close, right? I, I think one of the crucial moments there uh, for Aim Assist, who came... Oh, they could have they could have put, you know, just a few more points on the board if they had survived that four team melee in the final circle. You know, if they didn't have to throw down that Gibraltar bubble early on to raise it was the bubble the heels. That that might have been the difference maker. Who knows? But you gotta you gotta say at the end of the day, I am super impressed by everything we saw. I said at the beginning, of course, you know, aim assist, high highs, low lows, and they finished it off on a, in a very big way. And so, regardless of taking the win or not, they have to be proud with the performance they put on here in game number five. That last minute sprint to really be competitive. We're still waiting here, by the way, here at Series E to see the final calls coming out from our admins to see who walks away with that first qualifying sponsored spot. Yeah, and even if Amosis gets second place in this tournament, 
the way that they were able to turn it around, I'm not sure what they were they're on the leaderboard after top three. I, I can't remember because I don't recall seeing them over towards the top five or the top 10. So the fact that they were able to make this switch, and this is going to really open up their eyes going forward because I know Designful, he's going to want to play Pathfinder, but you're going to have to go and switch with the meta. And if that's the case, if it's going to be Bloodhound, then it's going to be Bloodhound. If a team's playing better with Bloodhound now all of a sudden, and if it's going to be, we're going to send it on all of these fights, do it because they were out shooting everybody. Their teamwork was there. Their baiting and switching. Their head glitching was there. So if you're feeling it and if you feel like you can run away with these things, a lot of times teams are scared to fight come tournament yeah. time. And if you're not afraid That's to fight and if you're going to send it and if it's too aggressive for you, you're just going to get washed out. And that's what aim assist is doing to these teams where they're like, hey, now's our chance to shine. This actually fits our play style. We'd rather send it anyway. We know we got to play absolutely crazy. Let's just do it, guys. And they end up doing it, and that's the result. So they can take this away, whether they win or not, and realize this is how they have to play every single game. Just do it. Just go for it. Try to fight. They tried to fight earlier but they just weren't as aggressive as they were the last couple of games. And they did it with a different team composition. Yeah. And flipping the switch um, by game number three, they had not cracked top 10 in terms of placements. Uh, they had eight kill points total across three games. In the last two games, when they made that swap off, they were able to pick up 31 kill points across game number four and game number five. And they finished in third and fourth place respectively. So you're absolutely right, Tom. This plays into their style so much more better. They're a team that, I think have arguably earned uh, the ego to be able to just push other teams, take every single fight up against any, any squad uh, competing in Apex Legends. They have proved it time and time again, where they have gone up against the best and they have taken them down. They took out three squads in a row here to really put their names uh, up um, in contention here. We'll see if they were able to walk away with first place. We'll have the leaderboards in just a moment. And again, here in the Afterglow, let's go ahead and take a look at the leaderboard. Who walked away in first place? Was it Sola Fide? And it was. Sola Fide are your first qualifiers here. They'll be winning one of the sponsorships with Intel, Cheez-It, Rice Crisps, Rice Krispies, Rockstar, Razor, Pop-Tarts, Apple Jacks, Nestle, and Pringles. We see it there at the top. But what a, whew, what a finish there. Aim assist, almost, almost getting it, making Sola Fide sweat, making Zara Tricky sweat. But man, you have to admit, these games today were super entertaining. We have three more weeks of qualifiers left, and I am so excited to see what all of these teams have in store for us, Tom. Yeah, and you look at the, the bottom half, right, with 165, Jerry Dan, et cetera, et cetera. Only a couple kill points or placement points separating these teams. You could have ended up maybe getting fourth place here with one or two different decisions, and that's huge compared to getting seventh on the overall points as we go through this week-to-week -week scoring system. So big day for Salafide. Obviously, congrats to them, but also big days for Aim Assist, Sarah Tricky, THT, 165, everybody in the top five. Yeah, uh, and so congratulations to Solo Fita, but we have to also remember that during our qualifiers, we've got $1,000 on the line going to our top two teams. So Aim Assist, you know, they put up some good points, and they're also going to be rewarded as well. $250 going their way, and Solo Fide, they get the sponsorship spot, and they get a nice little cherry on top with a big payday of $750 going their way. So big congratulations to Sola Fide. And, you know, this is a squad that's made some change-ups. The addition of Muffins. We're, we're seeing what happens when you throw a McCarthy into your <laughs> roster. Some amazing Just things happen. Just had to happen. split them up. Just had to split <laughs> them up. You know, the they're too good. So you had to split them up, and now they go their own ways, and, and they find success in that. But also, brothers are known for fighting, too. I, I've teamed with Lunchbox and Roy and Halo, and, and brothers tend to just go at it. So... You know, at the same time, they are their own individuals, but they have high, high IQ. And that's what you're seeing is they're great shot callers. And they did some amazing things today. Really, they did just really stepping up from game three, four and five, getting those early kill points numerous times and just exploding in the middle of this tournament for them. And congratulations, they are in the spot. Yeah, and so uh, we do have some things that we need to tie up before uh, we close out the show. Make sure, of course, we're doing giveaways every single time. Once again, congratulations to Solofide. There you see them on uh, on the feed. Um, 
we do, do you have the giveaway excuse me i got a little bit lost there um so go ahead and type an exclamation mark giveaway and you can win one of our cool series e hats hopefully we'll be getting one of those ourselves um in the coming weeks uh make sure you also follow our youtube because uh that's where a lot of the highlights will coming uh will be coming up as well um and we've got some informational content on there as well and i had to do one final shout out of course to all of our sponsors so intel cheese it rice krispies rockstar razor pop tarts apple jacks nestle pure life and pringles for really helping us put this on being able to sponsor all of these teams and ultimately ea for partnering with us so that we can put on uh this event tom any final words before uh we close out the show yeah thanks ea thanks to the sponsors thanks to the production crew esports arena to all the fans watching and especially all the players that put on a great show today great games guys yeah <laughs> that's gonna do it for us and that's gonna do it for us here at the series e make sure you're following us here on twitch we're gonna be doing this every week and then we'll have two shows a week once we get into the main season but the qualifiers that's what's important right now we'll see who earns another qualifying spot next week same time same channel we'll see you guys then have a good night